Oh, that's a nice one, buddy. <laughs> oh, that's a big dark fish. That's a triple header. Oh, <laughs> nice one, brother. Oh, he just come under the water. Whoa, he's pulling drag. Oh, nice fish. It's unreal. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by New Brunswick, always inviting. Prince Craft Boats, the spirit of boating. And Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in. Hi everyone, welcome to Fishing Canada. Well, it's early spring and we're headed to the Maritimes on one of our favorite Canadian fishing road trips, a drive to the beautiful province of New Brunswick. Now, I'm gonna tell you that right out of the gate, we just love fishing this part of Canada. And when you add a target species that both Ange and I live for, well, that's the ingredients for a perfect trip. We're going to the town of Nakawick on the legendary St. John River to get up close and personal with a relatively low profile yet quickly emerging player in these parts, the smallmouth bass. But what makes this trip extra special is the opportunity to immerse ourselves in the unique culture that makes New Brunswick such a pleasure to visit. Highlighting the culture may seem like a strange way to frame a fishing trip, but to us, it can be just as important as the fish we catch. Shooting the breeze with the locals here quickly tells us that these folks have a genuine love for life that's seldom replicated anywhere else. But this isn't our first kitchen party, nor our first feed of lobster. Thankfully, there's going to be plenty of that. No, we're here in search of another culture, one that the Maritimes aren't yet known for, the tournament bass fishing culture. To find this, we headed over to the inaugural Destination Nakawick Smallmouth Open. It didn't take us long to figure out that these competitive bass anglers were hardcore and we could instantly tell they knew the game. The boats, the gear, the attitude, even a bit of that Bass Pro swagger. They seem to have it all. As we watched the daily proceedings of the tournament kick off, Pete and I couldn't help but reminisce about our tournament days. It's exactly like the early days of our Ontario tournament bass fishing experience. Such a great time in our lives. We're in Nakwick Millville Rural Community. This is day one of the 2023 Destination Nakwick Smallmouth Open. We entered into a partnership with the New Brunswick Sport Fishing Association and the MB Bass Tour. Nakwick Millville Rural Community sits approximately 35 minutes north of the capital city of Fredericton. We're approximately half an hour south of the world's longest covered bridge. As the tournament came to an end on the final windblown day, Ange and I both knew deep down that these guys were the real deal. They've embraced this great fish species and are taking it to the next level. New Brunswick Bass Tour and the NBSFA, we've kind of, you know, just some guys that's kind of separated over the years and we just want to bring everybody back together, host a big event, take it back the way it used to be and get the most competitive anglers on the water we can. So even though bass fishing season's open all year here in the province of New Brunswick, we shut our tournaments down during the spawn to help with conservation and the growth of our fisheries. And speaking of next level, you didn't think we came all the way down here just to watch other people fish, did you? Uh-uh. We're definitely gonna sample some of the St. John's spectacular smallmouth bass fishing. And we're gonna be doing it in untouched waters. Yeah, baby. Well, my understanding of how the smallmouth bass got in the St. John River, they came out of the Quebec system. And they've been here for a lot of years. A lot of people didn't know much about them. And in the very beginning, they used to catch them and throw them in the woods. I'm gonna say the tournament started probably around late 70s, early 80s. And uh, it's been growing ever since. I don't think the bass are an invasive species and I think that they're here to, they're here to stay. Oh, that's a nice one, buddy. <laughs> oh, that's a big dark fish. That's a triple header. Oh, <laughs> nice one, brother. The area we're fishing is a skinny, uncharted section of the river that luckily for us was out of bounds to the previous day's tournament. Not only was this stretch free from angling pressure, it's also prime territory for smallmouth bass. 
since, as Pete said, this area of the river is uncharted on our Garmin maps, we have to ease our way on idle while cautiously looking for boulders. During our cruise, we could immediately see why bass have established themselves so strongly here. Rocky banks full of wood structure and back eddies that act as giant fish holding areas. It's perfect. Oh, that's a nice one, buddy. <laughs> he followed me right to the boat and I stopped and he came up and grabbed it. Nice oh. one, brother. Are we, uh, are we netting these fish or are well, we? Well, let me tell you, after I attempt to do it here, hang on, holy mackerel, that's a nice fish. Biggie, that's not him. Come on. Hey, buddy, that's a big one. Holy smokes. That's a good fish right there, brother. That is gorgeous. Oh, look at that, it just came out. <laughs> Perfect. How nice is that? That's a good start of the day, boy. That's a good New Brunswick fish, Ooh, man. Oh, son. I like that. <laughs> First cast into this little <laughs> creek mouth. In no man's land here. In no man's land. We weren't even really sure what to throw at these guys, but I, I got a feeling, according to uh, our good buddy Jeff Wilson, you can pretty much throw anything at them here in this one spot. That's a, an indication, buddy. There you go. Nice fish, bro. Wow. Ooh. And he followed you, so yep. I didn't watch him. So he followed you, didn't right take it, the, and then... He wouldn't take it, wouldn't take it. And then I stopped it at the boat, and uh, boom. Nice. Well, that didn't take long. In fact, it took us way longer to meander up current to get to this area than it did to hook up. It was that quick. Let's just hope the rest of the day goes the same. Not big, but nice. You get a hundred oh, yeah. of those in a day, you have oh, one. I'll tell you what, that would wear you out. Yeah, no kidding, <laughs> bud. Need a net? Nope. Easy one to deal with. Hopefully he just falls right off. Do you know what I noticed? So we haven't seen clusters of them, like two or three coming at you. Oh, at followers, yeah. Yeah. Another one. Double uh, header. That's called a double header. They're wow. beautiful fish, Zoe. Nice and light color. Yeah, I like and this. they're clean, not a mark on them. Yeah. That won't be the case here another week or so when they're uh, setting right up to do a, to do the spawn thing. Eh? Let's try and get a triple header as you're doing that. I think I just saw one swirl on my back. Did you really? I think so. I don't know. Maybe I'm seeing <laughs> stuff. You're imagining things now. Oh, no, he's rolling. Got it. That's a triple header. That's a triple. Ooh, that's a better one. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, a little better. Let me know if he's not worthy. Hard to tell right now. You know what I find right now? That they are lethargic though. Like yeah, they're not they're pulling slow. like a yeah, typical summer small. Nice. <laughs> that was a great jump. Let's see yeah, if we can make might... it. What are we going for? Fourth in a row here? Quad, a quad. A quad. He's got lots of hooks in him, but I'm still gonna net him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's, oh, oh, oh. oh, come oh, on, quad, him, quad, I, come on. I saw your quad fish. <laughs> no. Does it qualify if you see it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're throwing, obviously, our Yozuri hard baits here today, and they're instantly working for us. They, I mean, when they stick, they stick good. There's one. That could be a quad. You haven't released that fish yet. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and just throwing the twitch bait, and I'm throwing the uh, the jerk bait. I'm just, this fish is just... One hook in it, but Whoa. it's hooked really well. <laughs> like that. Uh, nice. You know what I mean? Beautiful. So the jerk bait bite and twitch bait bite, and they're exactly the same kind of actions. The bait just stop, suspend, pull, suspend. His is running a little higher, and it's a bigger bait. And the jerk bait is just a little smaller bait and runs a little bit deeper. It's a very good presentation for pre spawn largemouth and smallmouth. I could get another one, get a fiver. We could. What do you call that? A we had a quad. Quin, a quintuplet? <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good example of what we've been saying for years. And it doesn't matter whether you're in the river environment, in a lake. If you're trying to find prime areas in a body of water that you're not familiar with, one of the best things to do is find, oh, hang on for a minute. Find, incoming water, <laughs> he's gonna say, weren't you? Find incoming water, because it, it is a magnet for fish. And I don't care what species you're after, if you have a choice between fishing an area, say a bay that has 
uh, incoming water versus one that doesn't have incoming water, you got to go for the one with the water. Nine times out of 10, it's going to hold the majority of the fish. And this is a really classic example of exactly that, is this small little tributary that's dumping in that, uh, that is attracting these fish to start a pre-spawn staging. Yeah. Not, not <laughs> it's unreal. It is, un oh, he got up too. Unreal. Whoa, he's pulling drag. Oh, yeah. One of the water. Oh, nice fish. <laughs> now, as you can see, not all of these fish are giants. In fact, the average size is probably around two pounds. But that's more a result of the sheer numbers than any reflection of the trophy potential of this fishery. Quite honestly, this may be the largest population of smallies we've ever encountered in such a small area. And trust us, with a decent amount of three-pounders, a four every now and then, and a legit shot at a five, there's big ones here as well. Yeah, good, Another buddy. one right by the boat. Yeah, Adam, I don't want to lift them by, uh, by the, my line, just to be on the safe side. Oh, yeah, he's all right. Yeah. He, he is all right. So wouldn't that a lot of these fish, folks, just because the treble hooks we're using, they're dangerous. You're going to grab the fish, to lift the fish, the, the lure pops out right into your hand you got to be careful so that's sometimes you, the net really will save you another thing i want to point out too you might be wondering why we're using sunglasses in this situation because really we're in pretty shallow water we're we're electronically anchored up and we're just kind of fan casting all over but we are still looking to make casts to certain areas and without polarized lenses there is no way that you're going to be able to determine that but another reason to wear sunglasses when you're throwing a lot of uh, baits like we are, we've got a lot of treble hooks sticking out all over the place. It doesn't take much for one of those hooks to come springing back at you. And uh, man, you want to have some good solid glasses. Oh, that's a big dark is, fish. Is it good? It look dark. I just saw the back end of him. It's a darker fish than we've been seeing, isn't it? No way. No, no. not darker. He's bigger than the one I just got, though, that's for sure. I'm I think I'm hallucinating. I thought I saw a big black back <laughs> when he fell in. That's a good one though, bud. Yeah, it is. It's getting better. Oh, there's another one. Oh yeah, they're in, they're in tight. Them. Yeah. They're in real tight. We found them. That's a good fish, Pete. He's pulling good. Oh, that's a good fish, man. <laughs> that's a beauty. Nothing behind him though, I'm surprised. They don't want to fight the current. Yeah, too exactly. Lazy. You got them under the underneath too, eh? Yeah. Nick? Nice. Okay, we're on to them now. Uh, listen, this is a classic spot to wow. look at it. You can see in the background, folks. This is where you, like Ann says, any incoming water, or this is not really incoming, oh, it's a split. What's interesting here is we started fishing from the outside in. Now, normally, right here on the back side of this little eddy is where they should be, but we weren't getting any bites. So as we go in tighter and tighter, what looks to be the, like the, the main finger coming off of this, uh, this break. Holy smokes, they're just in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Hang on, buddy. I'll let oh. that one for you. <laughs> if you could just move back a little bit. Oh, that way. Yeah. he's come under the water. <laughs> no, he's not that big. Oh, he's a good one. There you go. Nice. <sighs> That is gorgeous. Good I, fish. I have a feeling this little cove here is a little indent off of this point. It's got hundreds of these in it. Oh, for sure. Hundreds. Fantastic. Up you go. Up you go, little darling. Yeah, baby. I set the hook harder on that one, Ange. <laughs> <laughs> I just lost one, and now go, boy. with this current, I'll probably pull it out of his face now. a boy. Oh, I think he's okay. He did a nice little porpoise on us. All right, I got I got oh, the boat. Decent. Hang on, buddy. The reason we net a lot of these fish too is because treble hooks come out real easy too, yes. so. Not bad. Not huge, nice, but not nice. bad. Fat. The fish seem like they're in bunches right now. I don't know what the deal is. They're just 
I guess in the spawning mode or the pre-spawning mode, you call it. They're grouping up together. Yeah, this one was not getting off, Angelou. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Fun fish, man. They're, they're so, they're so much fun, especially on these hard baits. We were hoping we wouldn't have to go to tubes and net rigs and drop shotting and all that kind of stuff. We were hoping that the hard baits were working. You know, a bait like that, 110 millimeter suspending jerk bait. And it's got a big twist bait on. They're perfect for this time of year. I mean, the fish pause it, the fish just wrap it. So lots of fun fishing. That is shallow as it gets. Man, and I man. can anchor oh. very soon, and I'll hit anchor real soon. You know soon. what? Go ahead and anchor, buddy. Oh, just a little bit longer, just for this depth. Okay. I think it's okay now. Here we go. <laughs> nice. Oh, Petey. Oh, yeah, that's a buddy. <laughs> You're getting there again. Yeah, that's so. There, there you go. It. Nice. Good work. That was shallow. Did you see how shallow I got no, him? No, I didn't. I, There's I, a I foot of water. Him. Really? A foot of water. And a good sized fish. Yeah. Shallow, shallow, shallow. I well, that's a good sign. Too. I just had another bite in Did there, you? too. Yeah, a couple. I think that's a couple. good sign, man. They may have just told us something. You'd always think in the deeper water, off the riffles and off the cuts and off the eddies and all that, but a lot of times what Ann's just did there, you go shallow just because, you know, a whim. And, and you wonder you wonder what they're doing up in there. They got to be feeding, obviously. There's, a, so. there's a, some crayfish uh, feeding on these points, apparently. So that's got to be it. They, they got to be in there just looking for crayfish syringe. Yeah, there you go. There you go again. Tiny guy in the shallows. Same thing. Wow. Yeah, that's really right that down is down to a neat pattern. There's man. a little bit of a dip there though. Yeah. There's like a foot difference. Yeah. So. What a fishery, man. Pretty much insane, isn't it? This episode's hotspot is on the St. John River, directly out and downstream from an incoming creek. The waypoint on your screen puts you right there. The beauty of this hotspot is it's accessible from both water and land. We were literally watching people fishing from shore, catching smallies. To get there, you can run your rig up from Nackwick or trailer to Woodstock, launch your boat and go up river from there. We used Yozuri suspending jerk baits, small crank baits and twitch baits for most of our fishing, but pretty much any smallie bait will work. The current is quite swift here, so remember to have a full charge on your trolling motor batteries or bring a proper anchor. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. I thought it said hook in the bottom. Oh, nice fish. Whoa, he's pulling drag. <laughs> Buddy. Oh yeah? I thought I I thought I said hook in the bottom. I love it when they take you around the back of the boat. Then you know you got them going. You know you got a good fish. Yep. Come on, baby. Shallow Come again. On. Hey? Oh, nice fish. Oh, yeah? Woo, woo, woo. Well, hang on. Net's got Whoa. a little bit caught. There we He's go. He's pulling drag. That's good. We want drag pullers. That's what we need today. Got him. There you go. <laughs> that was a blast. Wow. He must have swung around. Yeah, he's... Look how nice and golden he is, eh? He said, what the hey? Let me take a shot at it. Anyways, they're great, man. Unbelievable fishery. This is crazy. This is, I mean, you're going to, we're going to catch 100 fish today. I wonder... In half a day, you know? I, wonder, I guess these fish must, obviously, they stay here. They winter in this thing, I'm assuming. There are deep parts to this river. This is the St. John River. You just don't talk about the St. John River and smallmouth in the same sentence. Yeah. That's what makes it remarkable, is that it's it's a body of water that, you know, traditionally is just not known for smallmouth yeah. bass. Yeah. And yet, ah, so far from what we've sampled in terms of numbers, I can't even think of anything that would compare to it. it it's incredible. A person could grab a pair of chest waders and they could fish oh. so many miles of this river. You know, find some access and public access off the bank. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You got him? He, buddy, I think was sitting still. That thing was sitting still. And it's a good, I think it's a good one too. 
That was funny. We're talking about <laughs> getting a pair of chest waders on. And, uh, what are these guys pulling us around the boat now, Ange? What the heck? <laughs> Is that a big fish? I have no idea. He's pulling like a big fish. <laughs> Jeez, hey. He's still trying to climb out. That's the toughest fish going. Uh, yes. Yeah, what so, a blast. So, like all these areas we're fishing, we were just talking about with the chest waders. Like every one of these areas, four feet deep. Yeah, four feet might be a little tough to, to fish in chest waders, but the fish we're catching are in two and three feet deep, right? So as long as you can access public bank, public areas to get on with chest waders or shore fishing, you know, you'd be doing this all day long. This is insane. Just find a little area that's got a fish, and then when there's one, there's probably 20 or 21 or whatever, and uh, you don't need a big boat like this. It's nice to have a boat to access more water, but it looks like you don't even need it. This St. John River trip was absolutely outstanding for us. We can only show you a fraction of the actual numbers of fish that we got. 100 fish days are the norm here. So if you're a herring choker who just loves to get your line stretched over and over and over again, well, you need to add this area to your trip planner. If you're a traveling angler that loves multi-species fishing, it gets no better than this one of Canada's friendliest provinces, and a ridiculous number of the toughest fish in the entire nation. And finally, if you aspire to be, or already are, a tournament bass angler, then you need to get your butt to the Nakawek and the St. John River area and sample some of the most incredible smallmouth bass fishing you will ever experience. And who knows, you might just win yourself a nice derby paycheck. Getting There, brought to you by the Outdoor Journal Radio Podcast Network. To get to today's outstanding smallmouth after smallmouth action, we first took Highway 401 East to the Quebec border. Next, we took Highway 20 to Highway 30 and eventually got back to Highway 20. Next, we turned southeast on Highway 85. Once in New Brunswick, we took Highway 2 southeast. We turned left on Highway 102 cross the bridge, and then turn right on Otis Drive. We finally reached our destination at the Big Axe Bed and Breakfast on the left-hand side. This may just be the perfect location for a B&B. &B. It overlooks the St. John River and sits directly beside the Big Axe Brewery. You can simply walk over and partake in a great after-fishing meal or sample one of the many local brews they have to offer. What a way to end the day. Fishing Canada Show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure.